H, um, considering how close you are with your family, how, how difficult was it to move to Perth as a young draftee? Yeah, it was pretty difficult at the time. Um, you know, going through that draft process, all you want to do is be drafted. And you know, you hear a lot of kids say that, but it was, it was truly, that was the situation that I was in. And um, I'd actually been to Perth uh, two years before that with my brother's Create Carnival. Right. Um, and I just loved the atmosphere there. The weather was amazing. It was in summer, really cruisy and laid back lifestyle. Clearly you're excited to be drafted, but did you know you were going to be drafted? When it got close to the draft, were you a, were you a certainty or you, was it a bit of an up in the air thing? Yeah, it's an interesting process. You have, um, obviously it starts with having managers come to your house. They sort of tell you where they think you, you should be going, but you never really know until did your it, name gets called Did it go outside. to your head at all? Were you like cruising around the neighbourhood like... Uh, no, I would, I'm sure my mates would probably stitch you up and say yes, but no, nah, <laughs> I don't think so. It was, um, I did. Did you know that you were close to be being drafted here to the Bulldogs? I did. In the back of my head, I probably thought I was a fair chance of coming here. Um, was it a character thing that they passed on you? Oh, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so I was here at Witten Oval uh, two days before the draft um, and you know, caught up with uh, Jason McCartney and a couple of the, the recruiters at the time. And um, yeah, it was, just a, it was just a real interesting process. I mean, they, they tell you about where they think you might land. Um, you know, if you're there at a certain pick, they might be looking at you, that kind of stuff. And there's yeah. obviously no guarantees. Um, you mum wouldn't. was a typical mum, she wanted, to, she wanted me to stay home, but um, yeah, like my family knew that the, any situation that arose, they'd be happy with it, and yeah. once mum and dad and my brother got over to, to Perth and saw where I was living and the environment that I was around, they were pretty yeah. crazy about it. Yeah, right. H how do you sort of reflect on, on your time at the Dockers? Yeah, it was, um, it was a little bit frustrating early. Um, you know, being drafted as a 17-year-old at the time, um, I was 70, 67 kilos so when I was drafted, so I was well. So was I. I was well under, well under what I needed to be, and um, yeah, it was it was it was tough early because I had to get my body up to scratch, and um, yeah. I had glandular fever in my first year and missed the whole second half of the season after I played uh, my first three games. So um, that was something that was was tough for me because I had to put the weight back on and yeah. um, just had to get back up to scratch with everything, but. Um, yeah, it was something I wouldn't change at all. I mean, it's made me the player I am, but the person I am as well. And when did it sort of start to turn for you that um, you weren't entirely sort of satisfied with your, where your football was at? Yeah, well, I, I always had that, um, you know, wanted to stay at Freo to hopefully achieve a premiership. And we were in at that premiership window for, for four or five years. And yep. it was just something that I felt like my career was stagnating a little bit and I felt yep. like I just needed to change. What was the next step from there? Was it was it the dogs came a calling? Was it? Yeah. How, how was that time for you? The... Yeah, so there was, a, there was a, a few clubs speaking to my manager and my manager Matt Bain said, oh, we should catch up with the Bulldogs, they're fairly keen on you. So um, Bulldogs was the, was the only meeting that I had and um, yep. I had Joel Hamley at Fremantle that was, you know, I obviously told him about the situation that I was in and, yep. you know, he just, he just said how good the club was to him and how good the well done, Joel. <laughs> he's, he's a good man, Joel. He's a good dude. I'm getting a sense from you. It wasn't, you know, it was, it was hard to sort of say goodbye, let go, but then you'll say, you know, this was the best thing for you to come home and, and play for our footy club. Yeah, it was. It was a hard, hard scenario. I, um, as I said before, like, I loved Perth. I loved Fremantle as a club. Um, the fans were great. Uh, you know, the staff at the club were great. Um, yeah. And I have a lot of close friends away from the footy club that I, I'm still keeping real close contact to now. So. That was probably the hardest part about it, was just the relationships that I built yeah. over the years. And um, yeah, you know, I grew up there pretty much, you know. I'd you know, go over there as a 17 year old and start your adult life and yeah. spend your first six years there. And um, yeah, it was a great experience that I wouldn't, wouldn't change anything. Yeah.